Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hope Hines. Les Steckel is my special guest. And we are now going to go back uh, a few years, Les. We're going to go back uh, and do some nostalgia with the Titans. You were in the stadium. I was in the stadium. And, of course, all of you out there were in the stadium for the Music City Miracle, right? Roll the video, Taylor. Do the Titans least... have a miracle left in them in what has been a magical season to this point? If they do, they need it now. Christie kicks it high and short. Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, give Pitches it, to... it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, He's 30, got something. 50. He's got it. 30. He's got it. 20, 10, He's got it. Into the oh. touchdown. So, Frank Wycheck threw another pass. So was it a miracle, Les? You know, it was a miracle. I tell people it was a miracle because uh, Lorenzo Neal caught the kickoff. Yep. And I tell people Lorenzo can't even catch a cold, much less a kickoff. Kick off. Right. I know one time we had to beat the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans, and I told the staff down below when I was calling plays, I said, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to run this play. And Lorenzo was wide open in the uh, in zone, zone and Neil O'Donnell threw him a pass and I tell you it looked like it floated for about three weeks until he got to Lorenzo and he caught it. He caught it. But, Great. Uh, you you were scared to death. I was. You? And yeah. it, when I saw Lorenzo catch the kickoff I went oh my goodness there's a miracle in itself. Wow. Well there were 16 seconds on the clock. Yes there was. Against the Buffalo and I'm standing on the sideline. Mark Howard and I were standing there together because it was the end of the game and I was turned around Les just kind of looking at, I wasn't even thinking this was going to happen. Looking at the people, see who I knew <laughs> up there and all of a sudden the crowd started uh, and I turned around and there was Dyson right there almost stepping on my toes Easy. and going into the yeah. end zone. Uh, you talk about a shock. Wow. <laughs> and of course if it weren't for that it wouldn't have been any Super Bowl, would there? No, it wouldn't. It was an exciting moment. I'll always remember. My wife and I wrote a book called One Yard Short. I know you did. Uh, turning your defeats into victories. And in the book, I talk <laughs> about those moments where I had such a <clears throat> tremendous uh, feeling towards those players. It was their first playoff game for so many of them. And to see that we were in the lead up until that final field goal, and then suddenly, um, you know, they go and score. And to see what took place, I remember sitting there and just praying under my breath, Lord, right. I'm not sure if I want to coach this uh, <laughs> football business again. And uh, I really felt uh, the Spirit say, do you have faith? And I, I spoke out loud and I said, I have faith. And the receiver coach who was sitting next to me goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I have faith. And uh, next thing you know, the miracle happened. So all I, right. we were all blessed. Now something else. It's, uh, I guess it's been, uh, how would you describe the final play of the Super Bowl. And well, we're going to see it here in just a minute. Well, it was a play that, uh, honestly, I think we stayed up a couple nights in a row without going to sleep because we just felt like this was an opportunity to make a difference uh, for this city, for the fans, for the team. And uh, so I studied as much film as I had. We, we had a system where we called got to win plays. And once you get to the 40-yard line or the 35 or the 25, whatever it is, we had plays for every five to ten minute increments and when we got to the ten yard line we knew that if we ran a, a formation with four detached and that's why we split out Frank Wycheck because we knew he would be our go-to guy they would double him uh, we had a good feeling what they'd play so we looked at all 16 games and two playoff games and when a team did that they played only one defense and my thought was they're not about to change they're not about to change their defense after facing a Ford detached and playing this defense. We knew what they were going to do. And I actually got the defensive coordinator in our book, One Yard Short, and he was quoted by saying, they had us dead to rights. Well, we came up one yard short. You did, and you did indeed. And I suspect, how tough was that for you to live with? You know, I was asked this question, and I certainly don't want to sound uh, like a phony, but I had as much peace going into that game as any, and at the end, I did as well. Uh, I know that uh, when we got to sign uh, pink slips or playoffs uh, from the ownership that year, uh, our prayer was simply this, that uh, we wanted Christ to be honored and, and glorified. And little did we know that Kurt Warner was handing out cards outside the Atlanta Station <laughs> right. uh, Stadium and uh, sharing his gospel 
in his God, not his faith with the Jesus gospel. And right. people were turning around, handing cards out, and I thought, well, there you are. That's what we prayed for. Yep. But uh, it was a tremendous ride, and I, I can't tell you how exciting it was to get to know people here in this community. Well, let's, let's do this. We're gonna, Taylor's going to roll the videotape. I don't know exactly what we're going to see here or how it's going to unfold. It's the last few seconds and the last play of the uh, Super Bowl when the Titans uh, lost to the Rams. Uh, Taylor, if you're ready, let's roll it. Maybe we'll score this time. Not a good thing. After the timeout. From the 10. Probably the final play of the game. In regulation. It is caught by oh. Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Mike Jones made the tackle. And the Rams have won the Super Bowl. No line. The game is over. The game is over. Now every Super Bowl should have an ending such as this. Down there, there the he's being the gracious for everybody. Please. 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 Yeah, you know his heart is broken. <clears throat> yeah, it was. You know, Steve was. And there's uh, Brad Hopkins, Brad Hopkins, tremendous there's, player. There's Later was all pro tackle for us. Yep. Dick Vermeil, Dick and I have uh, stayed in touch. He actually sent me a bottle of wine from his winery to uh, oh, did he? <laughs> say, uh, I know how badly you must feel. There's yep. Frank Wycheck, who was one of my all time favorite players. And uh, Steve, without a doubt, was probably the most gracious, humble kid I've ever coached yeah. in my 32 years. He was a special guy to work with, and uh, my heart still, every time I think of July 4th, oh, uh, the first thing I do is think of Steve. Yep, yep. But I don't think people know uh, just his background at Alcorn and uh, the little that they played football. When Steve and I got together, he said, uh, when I asked him about how they called plays in college, he said, we, we always said right or left to say the strength of the formation, and there were always four wide receivers. And then they would call plays one through ten. And I thought he was kidding me until Chris and I went down to <laughs> Vicksburg, Mississippi to his wedding. And uh, sure enough, uh, <clears throat> we sat on the front row, and there's the coach and his wife and the president of the university and his wife. And so we had time. And I asked him a question, how they call their plays? And sure enough, they called them one through 10. One through 10. So I knew I had my work cut out for me, uh, wow. teaching Steve a professional uh, offense. And uh, Steve would come over to our home before he was married in Houston and have dinner. Chris would make dinner for he and I and the kids Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. And I would get out the uh, equal and the sweet and lows. We didn't have Splenda then. Mm -hmm. And we had 11 blues and 11 pinks, and we'd show them formations and defenses. Wow. And we worked through that three days a week. And then we'd go upstairs, and I bought a beta cam when they named me coordinator, stuck the uh, tape in, and we'd look at film. He'd come back Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then we'd give him the four day weekend, if you will. And uh, so, without a doubt, it was a blessing to coach Steve. He was a quick learner, yep. a fun guy. Could he take a little pain? Oh, my goodness. Could he take a little pain? I still ask the dentist about this, that he literally had a root canal with no medication. Oh, I don't know if you know I, that. Huh? I heard that story. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I asked him, and I've asked the dentist every time I go to that same wow, dentist, and wow. he said, I'm not exaggerating. That is, a, he, he was an unbelievable athlete. There's no question about he that. Was. He was. Could, he, could, he, could, he was injured during the week, wouldn't even practice, step out there on Sunday. And the other thing, you know this, didn't he take a nap before every game on the bench? Yeah, he'd be so relaxed in the locker room. Uh, I just really enjoyed playing, coaching with him, uh, just coaching Steve and, and all those kids. I was blessed to have Eddie George. I drove by the, uh, the stadium, stadium tonight, tonight. and yep. I saw the banners, and there's Eddie and Steve. Dates back to our Super Bowl year. And we got to take a break. Yep. We'll be back with Les Steckel. We'll wrap it up, everybody, right after this. Oh, yeah.